What's going on guys back again on the RC4 Drive K10 build off build. So we've been extended. They uh, added two weeks to the build off. So we have until April 14th and um, yeah, so we're gonna make some more changes and just keep uh, keep rocking and rolling with this thing. So you can see I flipped this front wheel around. I talked about it at the end of the last video, uh, trying to get the offset a little bit better. It just doesn't look, tires are too big to be tucked in as much as they were. Let's just put it that way. Um, these trucks always had a little bit of poke to them. And being that these axles are the same width as the Toyotas, and yeah, so here we are. <laughs> flip these wheels around. I got the first one flipped, and I've got these scale Chevy hubcaps. I've got a bunch of different ones. These are from Long and Tall Texan RC. Um, he's got a Facebook page now, as well as Instagram. Links to his Shapeway stores are there. Um, he's got a lot of different ones, it's a lot of different variety. These were his original ones, these are designed for just the cheap. Uh, Amazon 1.9 steel wheels and then I worked with him for a little bit testing these deeper ones that are smaller for the wheels that come on the Scottsdale the 1.9 rally wheels that RC4 drive sells so he's got one specific for that and then I've got a whole bunch of prototypes that are different depths different sizes <laughs> so I'm trying to piece together some that'll work some of these weren't tight enough to hold the wheel nuts some of them had a little bit more shank on it to fit into like the wheel, the 1.9 rally wheels have a real deep hub center. So it needs to slide down in a little further. So I've got one mocked up here and it's looking good. I've just got the wheel loosely put together. I'm still having one issue with this wheel. Um, let me get this hub cap out of here and we'll take a look at it. I'm not, I, I changed out. So we had those boom wheels and the boom wheels have a deep or a thick 12 mil hex. And you can see I'm still not even getting into the nylon here. And I think this side specifically has a pin problem because the I put a shallower hex on and I couldn't get it on there. Now I can't get it off. So I'm going to pull the body off so we don't mess anything up. And we're going to take a closer look at this. I got to finish putting all the bolts in that wheel. And yeah, we'll figure this thing out. All right. Finally got it off. Axle end looks fine. Our pin is bent. Um, it's got a little arch to it. Not sure what caused that I had a lot of different tires and wheels on it but you can see our hex is not fitting into this so this wheel i mean this has been on several different rigs that may be slightly damaged so we we'll have to see if we can get it out of there for one I got my little <laughs> gunsmithing hammer here try not to mar up anything as i'm hammering this i'll get into it so it does appear like we've got some damaged edge in here of some kind. Try a different hex and see. That one fits in fine. So it may just been this aluminum one that I had. And I didn't couldn't use this one because the pin was bent. So let me grab some. Oh, here's one right here. <clears throat> Another pin. Just want to see how far we can get that wheel on there. Because we need a little bit more of the shaft sticking out in order to attach everything properly. Yeah, that one's nice and straight. Let's do it like this. All right, something's wrong with the wheel. I can't get that through. Oh, Lord. So I think maybe the center of our wheel is messed up. Or is it this? What does the hex go on? Get the pin lined up. Of course, it's magnetized. All right, so that's not fitting either. All right, now I need to find the hexes that came with this truck because maybe they're a little different. And that's why I ended up going with this one because it fits on here, but it didn't fit in the wheel. <laughs> All right, this is troubleshooting here. Now we're working out. I got it. A combo, pulled out all of my silver hexes and found some that would work. Um, lots of different styles, surprisingly. Got some that are smooth, some have four-way, some that are just two-way. Um, I wish I remember which one I just put so I could make sure and put a matching one on the other side. I thought it was one of these nice machined ones. That's the one that came off the truck. Um, it's a little different looking in there. So, yeah, there's a little bit of variety. And that bent pin didn't help anything. So, we can at least see we've got about two millimeter poking out the back side. And, um, yeah, but we've got it all the way into the lock nut. And the cap fits on there good. So 
I got all the screws back on the wheel. I'm going to go ahead and get all three other wheels swapped around. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to get some paint on these caps. I got to find a silver real quick and uh, look at some pictures. Because I, I don't want to do the white caps because we've got white wheels, even though they're dirty as all get out. So I think we're going to do the silver. And, yeah, I don't know which ones are going to work. I guess I'll test them all right here. Like that one, that one works. Okay. That one's good. That one's good. Now we need rears. Rears don't have the uh, locking hub on it. I actually have a Chevy bow tie. That one works pretty good. And this one's shallow. Marked them color coded when we were test fitting things. That one. Yep, that one was good too. All right. So we got four that'll work. I don't want to take these on and off too much because I don't want to stretch out the plastic. They are 3D printed and uh, it's pretty much going to be a one-time deal. So once we commit to this and they're painted and weathered, they're going on and they're not coming off until we break the rig. <laughs> so I'm going to find some paint, get some stuff going on that and uh, do all these other wheels. All right, I'm still debating on paint color for the hubcaps. I'm just going to show you how I'm doing this. These are pretty simple. I'm not going to take the bead off or anything like that gonna pull the screws out kind of hold it together so it doesn't come apart keep one on the drill pull this off flip it around try to line it up as best we can if I could see through it be helpful. Let's start it back. I want to get it too tight till we get the second screw in there to line everything up and then we can torque them down. Come on. And be careful with these 1.5s. Okay. Torque All right. So we didn't have to de-bead the wheel or anything crazy. I'm going to have to deal with that today. Problem is these tires are pretty soft. Um, I can't leave the truck sitting around overnight with uh, out putting it on jack stands or something, unfortunately. But they do perform well. I mean, we beat the snot out of that long bed at Axial Fest last year with, with these tires and wheels. And uh, actually, uh, Harry, the long, tall Texan, makes these hubcaps, made me the eight lug wheels for that truck. And that's what we're going to be swapping that to with some of his scale center caps and things. So look for that coming in the future video. I'm trying to get this on and we will get some paint and we'll come back to the other two off camera so I don't bore you to death doing tedious wheel and tire things. Uh, this one had a bent pin also. So I think it's these boom uh, caps that come with the, those 155 wheels. I think you're supposed to switch to their pin. Obviously, there's something a little bit different about it. Maybe a thinner diameter or something. So let me look. We're looking pretty good. Pretty even. All right. Get the paint. Brief intermission. I almost forgot what I was doing. Put it on the shop truck chassis. Just see what it looks like. Man, it, oh, I dig it. Everything looks good on these. Even with the grandpa bumper and the bed stakes. <laughs> All right, gotta get back to work. All right, guys. I did some work on the body there off camera. The That bench seat just doesn't really fit. It barely fits between the door panels. Um, again, that was designed for the blazer and the conversions and things we did. It didn't have door panels. And the shrink RC door panels don't have quite as big an armrest. So I ended up just removing the entire mount. Um, the seat will sit on the battery and it's held in fine by the front and uh yeah it'll work just fine and it'll actually allow me to squeeze a little bit bigger battery in and the seat can come up just a hair so it's a win-win-win i mean you see i've got the tires and wheels mounted all up you can see the offset looks a lot better everything is pretty level with the fender so it just fills out the truck a little bit better so you will see the paint on the hubcaps came out a little sparklier than i intended so I'm thinking the next step, I'm going to hit them with the matte clear, try to dull them down. And then we're going to do like a black wash on them and uh, 
kind of dingy them up a little bit so they go with the rest of the aesthetic. But uh, yeah, I still love this thing. It's looking looking awesome. I never, I didn't really have a vision going into this build. I, I just wanted to try a new method with the paint, and we did that three or four weeks ago. And then I just kind of stalled on it. I didn't really have any any other ideas or, or a look I was after. And uh, once I started putting the body together a couple videos ago, started knocking out the annoying little things that aren't exciting to do, like the painting the lenses and all of that, and just getting the things together, getting the tail lights installed and uh, get through the, the hurdle of the unfun stuff. Then it started coming together, started getting a look and uh, yeah, just digging the look of it now. All the little details, the metal wipers, the Traxxas bumper, the Traxxas mirrors, um, the custom rear bumper, the stake bed, the seat cover, the billet steering wheel that totally sticks out like a sore thumb. <laughs> the, the faded out flopped carpet that was a, such a disaster. That was one of the biggest hangups. That cost me a couple weeks of just stress of like, I don't know what to do, I've messed up the interior. And it looks, it looks the part. I should have just trusted my gut and went with it. When I first did it, I just wasn't feeling it. And I was like, man, this is way too bright. And I messed up. But it come out exactly like I'd envisioned it. So you never know. And I just had the interior out. And I have rear view mirrors I was going to put in it. And I completely forgot. Dang it. <laughs> I tried to get... So I'm, every time I flip it upside down, some of the flocking comes off. And it gets stuck to the windshield because it's a nice shiny new part. It came out of a sealed package. There's a little static going on there. And uh, yeah, I've got all the excess off I could. Got it on, got the inside cleaned as best as I could. So I don't know, we'll see about Ruby Mare, dang it. Uh. All right guys, paint's pretty much dry. I look at some different kind of caps. So a lot of these were either like a cream color with red. Some of them were this color with yellow bow ties. Um, I've seen some that were silver with black bow ties. I don't know the ins and outs of the years, and I'm not really that concerned with it because one, I don't have the right kind of yellow paint, and two, the not going to be white. So <laughs> I'm going to see, just dabble here, hit this black bow tie, or make this bow tie black if we can without messing things up. Um, the paint had way too much sparkle in it. I needed to like invest in a regular silver. Yeah, I got way too much paint on that. Yeah, it kind of loses some detail. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go with the pigment binder and the black wash, real heavy, get in all these uh, areas. <laughs> I don't know what you call it. I'm kind of tired. I'm losing losing words in my head. But uh, all right, we're just gonna go full wipe. I don't like it. Try to dab it. And we'll just wipe it. All right. And don't mind my neighbor. He's decided to mow the right of way today, making lots of noise. Um, enough of that. So I got rust streaks just in case. I'm going to go ahead. This stuff takes a little bit to dry because this is like a, a dull coat. So it's going to change the finish of it. And we'll just mix in black powders, kind of like we did with the interior, the dash and door panels. And uh, it really came out good on that. And it really gets in the powder. If used reasonably it really gets down and everything so we're really going to try to get around this uh locking hub and, and add a lot of depth into that so let's just start with one of the fronts and it looks like milkshake i hope there's no boys in the yard i'm gonna pack it down in there real good that's probably a little bit too much i want to make sure to get the sides you know you can't see it that well and we're gonna get it all over our fingers. It's actually, it's kind of a fast process. Um, and you can do different, like sometimes I'll uh, dip in the that and then straight into the black or whatever color pigment I'm using. Sometimes I'll do like this and, and get the thing wet first and then come back with the pigment and uh, brush it around. But it's very forgiving. I guess I could hold it from the inside where I'm not getting my fingers covered. Just a simple little detail. I was kind of scared to paint these. I mean, I've been working with uh, Harry a long time on these, for at least for a couple months. We've been back and forth about trying to fit them to the Scottsdale wheels because they have a different hub set up. And he's wanting to make them work with that truck. So that's the uh, latest thing. And they come with those. So he's trying to enhance the stock kit with them. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's another one of those cool little collaborations 
Uh, I've never met the man, but we've done a lot of things. What does it say? It's going to rain. It's not supposed to rain today. We've done a few projects together, and he's done some amazing work. His stuff's, I found his stuff on Shapeways a long ago when I was first in the hobby. He's been into this for a very long time and does some pretty cool stuff. He's got a lot of stuff on Shapeways for the Clodbuster square bodies, dually fenders and marker lights and things like that that are kind of obsolete now. And he's transitioning over to these RC four-wheel drive bodies, but he's got a couple of those Clodbuster converted Chevy long beds that look amazing. They look better than these, <laughs> which is crazy to think, but it can be done. This looks terrible with the dabbing. All right, well, we got rid of our sparkle, that's for sure. I kind of like it. I don't think I want to do any, any rust on it. So dabbing doesn't work. And you get a different result, too. Um, like I said, I've been using this Matt Clear, the VHT high temp. It's for car parts and engines and things. I'm using that over the paint. One, it adds a layer of depth. Makes it look deeper than it actually is with just one coat of crappy Walmart spray paint. And uh, two, it protects the paint. That stuff is, it, I don't know if it's just because it's high temp or what kind of paint it is. I don't know if it's enamel or, or poison or whatever other flavors it comes in. It is super durable. And none of the rust streaks nor the powders or any pigments, anything will eat through it. It is completely, I don't say bulletproof, but it's <laughs> damage proof. And that is, makes it a whole lot easier to work with. And that's what we did. We discovered that on the Red Cat hauler. My first time doing Lexan and, uh, or my first real attempt at doing Lexan. And we sealed it with that stuff and rusted over it. And it worked phenomenally and uh, gave us a little bit of control without damaging the paint. And yeah, it is the answer to a lot of the issues I've had in past videos back years and years trying to do weathering and things, learning as we go. I think this is going to look good. Now I just got to let them dry enough so I don't take paint off with my fingers, trying to push them onto the hubs. And it also is nice because I don't have to come back and try to match the weathering on that wheel since we flipped it. Um, this is going to cover all of that. It's going to be nice and clean. And uh, it's going to also, too, the way that rear bumper looks. The rear bumper is silver and patinaed, and I think it really... It's going to help tie that together because not really a whole lot of silver on the truck. We've got door handles, grill, and rear bumper. And uh, yeah, let's let this stuff dry and see how it goes. I don't know why I do that sometimes. I said I wasn't going to do it. And then as soon as I turned the camera off, I did it. I just put a little splash of rust streaks on it. Um, not enough to really notice. Just added a little tint here and there. Like that one's kind of got it on all the spokes. This one's just on this side. This one's around half of it. Um, you see I messed up the black with some of that as well, but it all still wipes out and uh, just adds a little bit of color. And I'm going to leave it alone now for real, for realsies, and uh, let this stuff dry. <laughs> I need to wipe this one a little more. See, there I go. I guess I should just leave the camera on until I go to bed so that way you can see everything I do. This one, the orange is still a little pronounced on a couple of the spots. may not even be showing up on camera. All right, walking away. All right, those are on, look good. I'll show you more in here in a second. I, one little thing, it's all about the little details. I, I keep forgetting my keyholes. So I take this chrome pin, usually don't shake it up very good, and just dab it in. And once it dries, it'll sink in and, and even out and just add in a little bit of detail. So let's take a look at these caps. Something's weird about it, I don't know what. I like the caps, I like the way they came out. I don't know. I feel like they should be on a different color wheel. I don't know. <laughs> they came out fantastic. Uh, once they finished drying, I'll press them on a little further. A couple of them are on all the way, but a couple of them were, were pretty stiff. And uh, yeah, let's uh, complete the look. <laughs> so I don't know what's next for this truck. We've got a little time now. I'll fix the interior seat issue that we were having. Uh, we've got different tire and wheel. Um, I think next time we'll look at electronics. I've found a good supply of stuff. I've got a Fusion Pro and I found a Spectrum receiver. And I don't, the only thing I don't have is an upgraded servo. Because I do want to drive this truck. This is going to be my event truck this season, I think. Um, if I don't break the bedsides off traveling in, across the country. But um, 
yeah, I think this is uh, definitely going to be a driver. I've got these two uh, Scottsdale chassis, and I'm waiting on my second Scottsdale body. I actually heard today that uh, it's on the way, and we're going to be doing another Scottsdale build on a TF2, and uh, it's going to be something completely different. Um, it was supposed to be the one for the build-off, and this was going to be just a distraction, and I was going to make fun of Jeremy for copying me doing a farm truck, and then I was going to have another truck to enter, but uh, unfortunately it showed up a little late. So this one may actually be the one we enter. I don't know. We still got a couple weeks, and I've got pretty much every part I need for the other Scottsdale. And, uh, well, I've got a chassis laying right here. These are the other caps that uh, Harry was working on. Long and tall Texan RC. These are for these wheels specifically, the one nines. I guess it helps if I point the camera in the right direction. And, uh, yeah, we just a lot of back and forth trying to get them to fit into this deep hub that these wheels have. So we got that all worked out. And, um, luckily I ended up with about 20 prototypes and that's what we've used on this truck here. So, uh, yeah, just another one of those neat little collaborations. Just, uh, RC people sticking together and trying to come up with cool stuff for you guys and figuring out what, what it takes to make it all work. But I'm loving this truck. Like I said, this is going to be a, definitely be a runner. Um, I'm very limited right now with what I can travel with to events. I've got one bucket with shop trucks and rat rods, like the display for this, the company, the store. And then I've got, I can usually bring like two or three or four crawlers, depending on how I pack the truck. And uh, I need I need to figure out something where I could carry more, more crawlers safely. But that's still, I don't think we're going to get there this year. <laughs> Cost money. Need a camper or something on the truck and build a rack or something for it that's, out of the way and doesn't affect the fuel mileage but anywho um, i did see a notice from uh, rc plate shop my plates were done today so they should be shipping out so we should have them in time for the build off now they did uh get them done today is the 27th so yeah we still got till the 14th of april now for the for the competition and again this rc four wheel drive build off there's two competitions there's one for team drivers and uh, me and Jeremy and, and influencers, I guess you call it. And then there's one for everybody else. So we're not competing. In, I'm not competing against you guys. I'm competing against the team guys. I don't know what to expect. I haven't seen much um, of what anybody's done, but I'm just here doing my best. And I look forward to seeing what you guys have done for it. And uh, yeah, just sharing ideas with you. So anyways, let me show you the other side before we go. I think we, this, the wider stance really sets that off. It really fills it out a lot better. And one thing that bugged me in the beginning that I don't mind so much now, this bedside came out lighter than the door. And I don't know really how that happened. Uh, the rust streaks just did what they do. Uh, it got sanded differently. Um, it almost looks like that part was setting out in the sun. <laughs> this might have been under carport. I don't know. But it's just one of those things. That's how patina is. You don't. There's no rhyme or reason rules to how it turns out. It's just how nature paints cars or unpaints cars over time. <laughs> so anyway, guys, I appreciate you watching. Get out there and do something fun with the hobby. Keep it scale, and I'll see you in the next one.